The Vitara name came to the automotive world exactly 30 years ago. It was then that Suzuki caught the wind, realizing that the market was in dire need of a compact SUV with a passenger body. That's just our today's hero can hardly be called a real SUV. But on the other hand, it can definitely be considered the last generation of Vitara to date, which has earned the love of many Russian motorists. Well, from love to hate. Hate number five, modesty is beautiful. The Grand Vitara has a reputation for being modest, utilitarian, and unpretentious a workhorse of sorts. The model is of no interest to whistle and strike wand workers or car thieves. But the interior of the car is just as modest and utilitarian. The panel is made of hard plastic, and where there is hard plastic, crickets willingly start up there. Not always, but they do. The glove box and mirrors in the visors are not illuminated. Dashboard unpretentious to archaic. There is an onboard computer, but its modes are switched using stumps directly on the dashboard to access which you have to put your hand through the steering wheel. Accordingly, it is not recommended to do this on the go. The vast majority of copies sold in Russia do not have a touchscreen media system as a class, but only the most ordinary radio tape recorder, and its sound is rated either as disgusting or, at best, as none. The device does not have an input for a signal from an external source, however, it can play MP3 from CDs. In general, many advise immediately after the purchase to throw out the regular head and speakers if the previous owner did not do this. And this applies even to the performance of the expensive version with a screen. However, if a familiar bear stomped on your ears for a long time in childhood, and today you are used to listening to news radio stations like Business FM on the road, then the quality of music you will not worry. But the fact that the seat upholstery can be either black or black in combination with another black will definitely annoy you. All this Japanese asceticism and minimalism seems not very appropriate for a car that does not fit into the category of very budget. Love number five, don't be born beautiful, but be born happy. In fact, very few owners of the Grand Vitara rate their car as beautiful, but almost everyone speaks positively about its appearance. Indeed, Suzuki designers managed to create an image out of time and space. Born 13 years ago, the car does not seem seriously outdated today. At the same time, the model is distinguished, so to speak, by fantastic gender and age universalism. Behind the wheel of a Grand Vitara, a young mother with children, a fan of some extreme sports, a manager in a business suit, and a pensioner with seedlings and fishing rods look equally organic. The spare wheel hanging on the fifth door caused some criticism, and in 2010 it moved under the floor of the luggage compartment. By the way, not everyone liked it. It turned out that many liked the reserve, located like a real Jeep. In general, Suzuki designers have their own philosophy. We don't care about fashion trends and auto design. We just make cars to move in space, and we do them perfectly. And who doesn't like it? The market is full of beautiful. Hate number four, and you, friends, no matter how you sit down. Ergonomics is a statistical science, so the workplace of a car is always best adapted to a person with a certain average figure. But people are all different. And so many owners of the Grand Vitara complain that the seats are hard, that adjusting the steering column only by the angle of inclination does not allow you to choose the optimal position of the driver's seat, either the legs do not reach the pedals, or the steering wheel blocks the instruments, and that on a long journey they experience fatigue after four to five hours behind the wheel. Some lack lower lateral support, causing the right leg to come into contact with the hard edge of the center console, colloquially referred to as a beard. The leg has to be kept in tension, which, as you understand, does not increase comfort. The owners are struggling with this problem in different ways, who puts a pillow, who glues the foam rubber to the edge, but this does not radically solve the problem. Even more inconvenient is the self-lowering driver's seat. The mechanism for fixing its vertical adjustment is really not reliable enough, so that in three or four days the seat drops to its lowest position, which, as you understand, not everyone needs. And here, 
2. The time comes for technical creativity, who tightly welds the gear of the adjustment mechanism, who drills an additional hole and locks the position of the seat with a bolt, who fixes the mechanism in the lower position, but raises the chair to the desired level with the help of spacers. But the rear seats have backrest adjustment for tilt, which, in principle, makes the level of comfort for rear passengers acceptable. But many consider the rear sofa not very comfortable, but travel lovers complain that the interior transformation scheme does not allow organizing a full-fledged sleeping place in it. Love number four, I can see everything from above. That's what no one has any complaints, it's visibility, especially back. Many brands equip their crossovers with side mirrors that are more appropriate for a purely passenger car. Mirrors Grand Vitara have quite a decent off-road size, do not distort the distance to objects, and are electrically adjustable and heated. At the same time, the aerodynamics of their bodies is such that they almost do not get dirty on the go, eliminating the need for the driver to constantly go out and wipe them with a cloth. This is especially true in the conditions of our salty winters, when sticky abomination flies from under the wheels, and the consumption of the washer is comparable to the consumption of gasoline. The owners like the salon mirror a little less, since it is blocked by both the headrests of the rear sofa and the spare wheel cover. This casing itself protrudes behind the size of the car and requires special attention when parking. As for the forward view, then, as a rule, everything suits everyone, and only a few fussy people mention that the eight pillars still block visibility in sharp turns. But everyone without exception praises the light both near and far. Hate number three, left, left come in. Not too happy with the owners and the capacity of the car. This does not mean passenger capacity in any case, for adults get into the car without any problems, although many consider landing in the back row uncomfortable. The main criticism is the volume of the trunk, which is 398 for the five-door version and only 184 liters for the three-door. For comparison, in the trunk of the good old Neva VAZ2121, about which they said that she had no trunk from the word absolutely, 320 liters of luggage fit. What is 184 liters? A few bags from the supermarket will certainly fit there. But in order for a family of four to go on a trip to the Grand Vitara, well, at least on a vacation to the south, and take everything you need with you, the car will have to be equipped with a luggage box on the roof. Naturally, this will worsen aerodynamics and increase the already not the lowest fuel consumption. Plus, the back door of the car opens sideways. But the car is Japanese, so the door opens in Japanese, blocking the approach to the trunk from the sidewalk. Love number three, we'll get through it all. At least four out of five Grand Vitara owners consider cross-country ability one of the main advantages of their iron horse. True. Here you need to take into account that finding inveterate jeepers in the crowd of Viterovods is by no means an easy task. Most of the owners of this car move to it either from passenger cars or from classic crossovers against which the Grand Vitara can really seem like a real tank. However, the most sensible of them give a very accurate assessment of the off-road potential of the model, go to the country, go fishing, drive to the village to visit relatives on a broken primer, this is all right, with all the pleasure, but more serious tasks are not up to her. Grand Vitara is a city car, which should have bumpers in place and bags from Oshan instead of a hijack in the trunk. It's not good or bad, it's a fact. Firstly, 200 millimeters of ground clearance is not that much. He sat the car on his belly on arable land, a muddy meadow or in virgin snow, and that's it, a shovel will no longer help, you need to run after the tractor. You should not meddle in deep fords either. The breathers of the bridges are only a dozen centimeters higher than the bridges, so the chance that the gearbox cooling in the water will suck in a lot of water with a mud suspension through it is quite large. In the best case, you will have to change the oil in the gearbox, and in the worst case, you will end up with repairs costing from 40 to 60,000 rubles. Many believe that nothing is being done to permanent all-wheel drive, slip for at least a day. Alas, this is not so. The transfer case seals really do not like heavy loads, so if you wallow in clay for several hours or decide to drag a hippopotamus out of the swamp in the sense of helping out a stuck comrade, then most likely the seals will leak and they will need to be changed. 
and there are three of them in the transfer case, and only one changes without removing the box, and replacing the shank oil seal does require its complete disassembly. Plus, it is worth considering that the rear towing eye is made and fixed to the side member in such a way that, under solid loads, it begins to float and, unbending, can reach the edge of the bumper and even hush it up. In short, you need to remember that the Grand Vitara is an SUV with the soul of a crossover, and you should not force it to jump above its head and do something that the car was not intended for at all. He can easily drive through a snowy field along a track from a snowmobile or overcome a washed out country road where cars do not shove, but to turn into a real off-road conqueror, he lacks not only the tanks are not afraid of dirt stickers. Hate number two, shaking in a smoky train car. In preparing this material, I read at least a hundred and a half reviews of Suzuki Grand Vitara owners about their car, and literally in almost every one you can find references to excessive suspension stiffness. Someone is quite satisfied with this rigidity, someone is ready to put up with it, but there are also those who mention it among the main shortcomings. On a rough road, a single driver Grand Vitara performs the jump jump dance with pleasure, and its owner literally feels every hole and every pebble with his whole body. Some hint of a smooth ride appears only when fully loaded, preferably with luggage, but that's exactly what a hint. A typical review goes something like this, recently I went to Belgorod and back, 1,400 kilometers. The car shook my soul. And this is not my personal feeling, all four people in the car said so. It is annoying that it is small joints on the asphalt that are transmitted to the body. A little the quality of the road surface deteriorates, there is a feeling that you are driving on a washboard. Love number two, I'm rolling fast on cast iron rails. However, the rigidity of the suspension also has a downside, even its most vehement detractors confirm the very good handling of the Grand Vitara. The car really holds the trajectory very well, not paying attention to either individual bumps or longitudinal ruts. Of course, the Grand Vitara does not steer as sharply as the driver cars, but there is no trace of rolls, build-up, or catching of the trajectory. Everything is simple, reliable, and, importantly, very predictable. Compared to the frame predecessors, which were very rawly, and they didn't really know how to drive on ice and gravel roads, well, maybe only at a speed of 50 km per hour, Grand Vitara very tenaciously clings to the road at high speeds, turns well, and on the ground allows the use of rally techniques. The correct operation of the stabilization systems also contributes, especially in icy conditions, which, by the way, is automatically turned off if a downshift is engaged and the center differential is locked and is automatically turned on again if the speed exceeds 30 km h But ESP never turns off completely, so if you want to go out on the ice in winter and play pranks, go crazy and start the car into a skid, then you are unlikely to succeed, ESP will deal with drifts in all known ways. Grand Vitara and its owners generally feel good in winter, the car starts without problems even in severe frosts, is able to park in snowdrifts, behaves well on slippery roads, and does not freeze the driver and passengers. Only the absence of a heated steering wheel and windshield annoys. Hate number one, eats and doesn't ride, doesn't ride, but eats. Regarding the assessment of the dynamic characteristics of the Suzuki Grand Vitara, as they say, the opinions of scientists are divided. Some argue that everything is fine, especially in city traffic, while others whine that the car does not drive at all. And everyone unanimously scolds the vintage 4-speed automatic both for thoughtfulness and for unwillingness to switch to higher gears in time. One of the forum comedians described the situation as follows, it accelerates not quite nauseatingly, but only up to 100 km per hour. Then retirement and relaxation. At the same time, the most common topic for snorting about a car is fuel consumption. In particular, the combination of a 2-liter engine with an automatic is often scolded, and in fact it was he who accounted for the lion's share of sales. It is understandable, as I said, many owners moved to the Grand Vitara from compact cars, so they got used to completely different numbers. For those who manage to drive heavy SUVs, a consumption of about 14 liters in the city and 10 on the highway seems quite acceptable. The situation is aggravated by insufficient sound insulation of the engine compartment. 
More precisely, in normal modes, it does not cause any particular enthusiasm or serious complaints, but when overtaking, when the box switches from fourth gear immediately to second during kick down, the noise level instantly rises to the frightening level. Love number one, this is such music, such as eternal youth. And yet, the main advantage of the Grand Vitara collective mind considers endurance and reliability. The car does not have so many congenital sores. For engines, usually a 2-liter one, the timing chain stretches to 150,000 kilometers, especially if the owner did not keep track of the oil level. Often the mechanism of the attachment belt tensioner roller fails, so experienced Vitar owners recommend always having spare belts and rollers with you. At the turn of 40 to 100,000 kilometers, the converter in the exhaust system can die, and its death manifests itself in a very strange way. The check engine lights up on the panel, which is natural, and the cruise control stops working, but this is already incomprehensible. The front stabilizer bushings run out very quickly, and many complain that they have to be changed almost every 15,000 kilometers, that is, with every MOT. There are problems with silent blocks of levers, which, alas, change only with the levers. The power steering tube needs to be replaced every three to four years due to wear at the attachment points to the body. There are also a number of characteristic breakdowns, but this whole anamnesis is greatly extended in time, so the total cost of owning a car turns out to be quite acceptable. The reviews do not resemble price lists for repairs with a final six-figure sum, and there are a lot of instances on the roads aged 10 to 12 years of age, still in good spirits. There is a phrase on the net, Suzuki cars cannot be loved, they can only be driven. Here they go. As one of the owners wrote, frost, heat, heat, fire smoke, country road, dirt road, greater, snow-covered highway, village or city. We jumped and went where we decided, and not where you can drive. Of course, without fanaticism. Why no fanaticism? Yes, because fanaticism does not go well with eternal youth.